It's showtime, folks. Enjoy the show. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to Matt Presents, the show where I talk about some movies. I showed at a movie night two weeks ago and recommend some movies for tonight's movie night. Toning things down a bit from the first week, but not by that much. <laughs> it's... We're, we're still riding high. So up first we got Quentin Dupont's Rubber. Uh, Quentin Dupont's most well-known film. Um, I've seen one or two of his other films. I have Wrong right here, which is alphabetically the last uh, DVD in the main part of my collection. Although that's going to change with one of this week's recommendations, so... Rubber, of course, is the classic story of a tire that comes to life, rolls around the desert, and blows up people with its mind powers. Sure, we've seen it before, but have we seen it as a slow-paced, surrealist art house film? <laughs> what do you say about Rubber? It's so fucking ridiculous. Uh... I love it. I, I love it so much. I, I was watching in this time and I just had a big smile on my face the whole film. It's been a little while since I've seen it. Probably eh, four years-ish. I don't know. Um, it's a great movie. I love it so much. It's such a weird fucking movie. Um, it is a bit slow-paced, I noticed that this time, but that made it a lot funnier in my mind, because I know how ridiculous it gets. So, it's almost like teasing you. It's like, yeah, there's this story about this living tire blowing up people's heads. It's coming. It's coming, don't worry. Because there are, there are films about killer fucking everything. Killer cookies, killer bongs, uh, killer turds, killer condoms. It's all out there. Uh, killer tire, not that outlandish. But there's no reason for the tire to come to life. It just does. Um, and it just kills people. It has no motive. It just kills people. Um... And that's kind of the point of the movie, I guess. The There's this lengthy speech at the beginning of the film where uh, this guy talks about how movies are just based on no reason. Things can just happen in movies for no reason. And I really appreciate that about this film. I, I can really get behind it. I, I have long championed the idea that Anything can happen in a movie. And that's why I like these weird, absurd movies. Because it's like, you can do anything, just do it. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be realistic. It can just happen. And that's sort of where Rubber falls. That's sort of the point Rubber's getting at. Um, so, I, I like that aspect of it. It's also just thoroughly weird and entertaining on its own. Um, I did not notice prior to this watching that this film featured uh, David Bow. Not to be confused with David Bowie. It's not David Bowie. David Bow, uh, famous for appearing in UHF. He was Bob in UHF, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I, I just realized he was in this movie. He's a... Uh, there's like a, a hotel owner who's also like a bad father. It's it's Bob from UHF. Very happy about that. Nice, uh... The cover is one of these, like, 3D where you, you move it back and forth and it's like two different pictures. The tire, like, rolling up and killing a bird. Yeah, just a thoroughly weird, hilarious movie. My friend told me about this. He's like, oh, there's this, like, weird movie about a tire that comes to life. We gotta watch this. And I, I, we went into it expecting, like, a bad movie. Um, 
And it's not. I genuinely think this is a good movie. I genuinely like this film. Moving on, the second movie we watched was Vampire Hookers from 78. Stars John Carradine as a vampire. And he's got uh, three vampire hookers that work for him. So I guess that makes him the vampire pimp. Vampire hookers wear Powerpuff Girl colors this whole movie, and uh, John Carradine is always in white. So there was a very Powerpuff Girls vibe from this movie. So this here is Vinegar Syndrome's five films for five years. Um, Vinegar Syndrome, I, I mentioned last episode that Arrow Video is sort of the... Arrow Video is like the Criterion collection for obscure horror movies. Arrow Video is to Criterion as Vinegar Syndrome is to Arrow Video. It is even more obscure horror movies and just general exploitation movies. Um, they've put out a lot of porn, actually. Like, old-school, like, 70s porn, where it had, like, a story and characters. So, for their fifth anniversary, they put out four of these five films for five years. And I snagged Volume 4, which is Horror and Exploitation. Um, and I'm very glad I got this one and not any of the other ones. It was a limited run, so... A limited edition of 2500, so... You cannot find this DVD very cheap, or Blu-ray, very cheap anymore. But I bought it firsthand from Vinegar Syndrome. A lot of good collector stuff from Vinegar Syndrome. That's the target audience of Vinegar Syndrome. It's collectors. Um, I have a lot. <laughs> show you here. So I have Sweet Sweet Bag's Badass Song from Vinegar Syndrome. And you know, nice Blu-ray release, lots of bonus features, lots of good stuff on this disc. And the idea with five films for five years is that uh, they didn't think the transfers were good enough and they didn't think they had enough extra material to justify giving any of these movies a Blu-ray release. Most of them I think they did release on DVD, but um, this is the only time these movies have been on Blu-ray. Um... I'd actually seen one on here. The first one on here is Cry Wilderness, which was on MST3K The Return. So that's how I've seen that. Uh, and then now I've seen Vampire Hookers. Three more on here. Evil Come, Evil Go, The Cutthroats, and Teenage Seductress. So I'll probably be recommending those down the line. Um, assuming they're easy enough to find, because Vampire Hooker is on like Amazon Prime for free. So... I wasn't worried about people having to find a copy of it. Yeah, interesting movie. Not a whole lot to say about it. Uh, but it's it's weird. Uh, it's like these sailors come to China. Or, or some Asian country. I think it's China. Maybe it says on here. It does not. They go to an Asian country, and, uh, there's, like, this local legend about vampires, and they meet these hookers, and the hookers turn out to be vampires, and they work for John Carradine. What a man. What a fucking man, John Carradine. The whole Carradine clan. I love all of them. All the Carradines are great. It's a wild one, I'll tell you that much. Might be worth watching for, like, a, a bad movie night, if you have some friends over for a bad movie night. Vampire Hookers, not a bad choice. Kind of funny. Weird title. Fucking amazing end theme. I actually pulled up the uh, trailer for it last week because I like to put padding between these movies so I played the trailer for this film 
and the fucking theme song for this. It's so good. Like, rivals Beware of the Blob for best movie theme. For be- best horror movie theme. Uh, yeah, Vampire Hookers. Don't know that I have that much to say about it. It's interesting. <laughs> Moving from something so obscure it couldn't get its own Blu-ray release to an Oscar-winning movie with an A-list cast at the time, at least. The Poseidon Adventure! We did not watch this on VHS. I got a DVD for it. I had to, actually, because I have a VHS, I have a VCR here, but, you know, then we're in the middle of a pandemic as I'm recording this, so, um, I, I had to, I put it all on a Google Doc, and we all just hopped on uh, Discord and watched the Google Doc. By the way, if you look in the description of this video, at least until this pandemic blows over, I'm just putting the Google Docs in the description. I don't care. It's probably illegal. Uh, the Poseidon Adventure. I was worried we weren't actually going to get to show this, because I borrowed it from the library. I borrowed the DVD from the library to rip onto my computer, and then I accidentally deleted the file it was in. But, uh, Netflix DVD came through for me, so I did get to show The Poseidon Adventure. Very weird movie. Objectively the most normal movie I showed all night, and yet still, weird as fuck. Like, there's, uh, they're on this ocean liner uh, on New Year's Eve, and at midnight, New Year's Eve, the boat gets hit by this giant wave and flips over. And they have to make their way up to the bottom part of the boat so that they can escape. It's like they have exactly enough characters to be expendable. You know? Like, every time something happens, every room they enter, someone dies before it's over. You know? It's like, here's the obstacle... We're gonna do it. Oops, someone died. Okay, here's our next obstacle. Let's do it. Oops, someone died. Kind of repetitive. Kind of a fun movie, though. I I did sort of enjoy it. Weirdly, of the three movies I have recommended without seeing, uh, Caligula, Vampire Hookers, and Poseidon Adventure, none of them I can say I liked. But all three of them, I'm glad I saw. I am not disappointed about putting them in my movie nights. They're all very fascinating, even if they're not very good. This is a very fascinating film. It did win an Oscar. It was our first Oscar winner. It's like Best Special Effects, I think. An Irwin Allen production, although it was not directed by Irwin Allen. Who directed this, actually? Ronald Niami. Ronald Niami? Hope that's how you pronounce that. Uh, produced by Erwin Allen, who made just a ton of disaster movies in the 70s. Now, that was a very big genre in the 70s, was disaster movies. And then they stopped really being a thing in the 80s. We focused more on, like, action movies but then action movies started to die out, and in the 90s, we got a bunch more disaster movies. But the 90s disaster movies are fucking terrible. I hate 90s disaster movies, with a, a handful of exceptions. I mostly hate 90s disaster movies. 70s disaster movies can be kind of hit or miss, but uh, this one was good enough. Uh, Leslie Nielsen plays the captain in this movie, and... <laughs> I kind of had to explain to my friends that Leslie Nielsen did a lot of disaster movies back in the day um, until he made Airplane. Because Airplane was supposed to be like a parody of these types of disaster movies. So they got a bunch of actors from these types of disaster movies. They had like Peter Graves and uh, Leslie Nielsen and one or two other guys. Um... So the joke in Airplane was that Leslie Nielsen was not a comedic actor. He was a disaster movie actor. 
But of course, after Airplane, he became a comedic actor. He was just in a bunch of comedies after that. So now everyone knows him as a comedic actor. Um, maybe rightfully so. I don't know. I think he's decent in the uh, the other movies I've seen him in. Decent performance from Leslie Nielsen. Also stars Ernest Borgnine and uh, Gene Hackman, known for playing Lex Luthor. And uh, Ernest Borgnine, known for probably Mermaid Man. That's probably what he's best known for nowadays. <laughs> um, he's in like The Wild Bunch and a bunch of other great movies. Yeah, very... Very odd movie, all things considered. Considering it's a pretty mainstream disaster movie, it's very odd. I have a friend who told me they showed this movie on a cruise? He was on a cruise and they showed Poseidon Adventure. And I'm like, that's not a movie you should show on a cruise. So, last week I asked you... If you preferred themed triple features, or if you were fine with a grab bag. And most of you seemed fine with grab bags. Which is great. Because I've just got three random movies here for you. Two of them are foreign action films. I didn't think about that until recently. So my question this week is... What's your favorite bad movie of the 2010s? Because we're going to watch one of mine this week. But first we've got two action movies to get through. We're going to watch Run Lola Run, one of my absolute favorite movies, a uh, German action film. I, just like a month ago when I did my action movie world tour, I recommended this for Germany. So I'm going to be showing that tonight. Then we've got the Chinese film Zoo Warriors from 2001. Um, have not seen this film. Very interested. It's... Uh, I think it uh, seems like the choreography is done by uh, the people behind The Matrix and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So that's exciting. Um, had this for a while. Interested in giving it a look. And finally, we're going to watch one of the funniest bad movies of the 2010s. Book of Henry. Holy fuck, I love this movie. Can't wait. So, until next time, I'm Matt, and have a nice day.